Hi guys, good right to scale Malta. It's been a holiday. I've come back from uh, from Australia, hence the hat. It's a little chilly. Um, I'm still adjusting. Um, it's, everything's completely different out there. Um, but yeah, I'm still I'm still adjusting. Um, but yeah, uh, hi guys. And welcome back to Scale Malta. So we are cracking on with our Suzuki GSX-RR. Uh, we're on part five, so we are finished. Now this, this video is the last, and uh, you'll see some finished photos at the end. There was one photo I put up on my Facebook and, and, and Instagram, I believe, um, of the finished model, but just the one, just one side shot. I've got some nicer photos, which I took earlier using my girlfriend's swanky camera. Um, I don't know how to use it properly, so they, they're going to be terrible. But, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, you'll see some photos later on. Um, but before we jump in, I'd just like to thank everyone because I'm getting very, very close to that goal of the, the 4,000 watch hours. I think I'm about 130 away, so hopefully these past two videos uh, will help quite a bit. Um, yeah, so thank you guys. Um, with that in mind, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe um because the sub subscribers keep on climbing as well thank you guys um but apart from that let's uh let's jump in okay so we're jumping straight in with paint and priming is first and um, we're priming with mr surfacer 1500 black again thinned with uh rapid thinner mr rapid thinner um uh, about 60 40 60 percent thinner 40 percent paint um I've clamped this halfway up because this this part's going to be hidden. We're only really painting the bottom bit, um, the the kind of the legs. The don't know what the bottom bits are called, but those bottom bits of the forks uh, is all we really need to paint you. Um, they're quite a comp complex shape, so make sure you go around and uh, and you get every little little bit um, and slowly build up the uh, the primer. I think we ended up with three coats, um, and the, the coverage on this primer is absolutely excellent. And with it being a lacquer primer, thinned with rapid thinner, it does dry pretty swiftly. Um, <clears throat> so for the most part in this video, we're going to be focusing on the front end, as I would have mentioned before. So all the parts we are painting now are going to be um, mainly fork pieces. Um, there's some... Um, handlebar pieces there's some uh, um, you know the yokes and whatnot but what we're trying to do is uh, we're gonna this is the final part we're getting everything at the front already so we can put the um, we can put the forks on and we can uh, we can dress her and take some very nice photos so next up we're using alclad chrome and we are using um, <clears throat> Uh, we're using Alcloud Chrome for a couple of little bits. Uh, these are the clip-ons. Um, so these are just the bars which the which clip on to the uh, to the forks where the handlebars attach to. Uh, generally, in real life, the clip-on would run the full length and the, everything would be attached to the clip-on. Um, but this is a kit, so it doesn't really matter. Everything needs to fit together nicely, and rather than uh, the molding, the grip separate and whatnot. It was easier for Tamiya to do it this way. Um, so with a couple little bits and bobs, that was a bolt. Um, and then this is the uh, shaft for the steering dampener. Um, essentially, all the steering dampener does, if you are unaware, is dampens steering inputs. Um, so generally, they're adjustable as a hydraulic kind of thing where... Um, it makes it a little bit harder, puts a bit of feedback, shall we say, on uh, on turning the bars. So, um, so yeah, generally, um, you require less input um, than is actually available on the bars when riding a bike, and it, it just makes things a little bit more precise and top tier riders. Uh, precision is something that they need. So next up, we're using Gold Titanium by Alclad. Again, we're going to apply this as we generally would any other Alclad in thin coats. Um, 
So we're using this for the calipers. The calipers were a slightly, <clears throat> a slightly bright gold colour. So we went for this. This isn't too gold. Um, it is just a, a kind of a. It's got a, It's a like a chrome really with a gold tinge. So we use this for the calipers, and uh, yeah, I think they came out quite nice. Calipers were stuck together, obviously, before this, um, just because it's easier and that's the way they go on. Again, we want to slowly build it up. However, with this paint, it doesn't have to be a high shine glossy finish, so uh, it doesn't matter too much if you're a little bit uh, if you're a little bit heavy. So yeah, don't don't stress too much. Just make sure you get every part. Also, make sure to uh, to get the insides as well, because they may slightly be visible from some angles. So next up, X32. I realise I called it X31 in my previous video, because I'm a bit of a pleb. X32 Titanium Silver. We're going to use this for the silver parts, which don't really need to be too glossy. Um, so a couple of things we painted with this. Um, there's a couple of... Um, brackets which go on the bottom of the forks um, <clears throat> we also painted the bottom of the forks the fork legs the fork feet the the bottom anyway we painted the bottom of the forks um, I think there was one or two other little small bits which we painted in titanium silver um, but <clears throat> there wasn't much needed to be honest titanium silver I do really really like the titanium silver color ah there we go um, this is, I believe, the ABS sensor pickup ring. I'm, I'm I'm not too sure, not ABS or speed wheel sensor. It's definitely something, um, and it needed to be painted. Um, that's it. We also painted the um, the top yoke um, in uh, titanium silver too, um, and later on we went to put a bit of carbon fiber onto that. Again, Tamiya uh, acrylic paint thinned with lacquer thinner. This is um, rapid thinner, and again, it's about 60-40. Um, there or thereabouts. Uh, don't get too hung up on the exact measurements because you'll be there for ages. Um, but all paint's different, and it changes. And um, I Generally... What I tend to do is, if I've still got some left in the colour cup, it goes back into the pot, so there's going to be some thinner in there, so it's never an exact ratio. Just just play it by eye. Okay, next up, LP61 Metallic Grey, another one of my favourite colours. Um, this could be used for many, many things, and in this case we're using it to paint our carbon ceramic discs. Now, these centre bits... Um, it pretty much completely metallic grey. Um, we're applying it uh, quite thin, uh, not thin, quite far away to leave like a speckly texture maybe. Um, just maybe have a bit of that primer showing through. It doesn't really matter too much. I think these centre carriers are literally just metal. But these carbon ceramic outer pieces, now I'm spraying this from very far away. As you can see, my arm is as far as it'll go back. And my other arm is like four foot away I'm just trying to get some paint to kind of dry in the air or semi dry before it hits the piece and it'll leave like a speckled finish with a with a bit of a, a bit of a texture and as you can see it you can see some of the primer showing through this is the way I like to paint carbon ceramic with a metallic gray with a, a like a, a flattish black or a satin black undercoat or in this case it was the uh, mr. surfacer 1500 um, and this was repeated on the front and the back of uh, of each disc. Okay, you can see my lovely clean mat, um, new mat underneath, and this A31 is a bit of my my sacrificial mat for the top. Um, but now we are going to be uh, getting stuff ready to put together and. Uh, and yeah, so it's super simple. Um, we're using the fork set, 
Um, first that goes on is the stanchion, I believe it's called, the inner piece. Um, then there's um, a uh, like a gold part. This part would have was the seal on the actual fork. Then we've got this centre part, which is carbon fibre, I believe. Um, I think it's that part. Or is that part that connects? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we've got this part on. Um, build it up as per the instructions, and the metal piece on the end screws on. So it holds everything in place. There's no need for any glue um, to hold it on. You can pop a bit of glue on if you want, if you don't trust the thread on styrene. But uh, I was quite happy. It was quite a tight fit. Try not to over-tighten it, because then you will bust the thread, and you will need glue. However, it goes together really, really well. And here's what i done earlier, as Neil Buchanan would say. Marvellous. I think the fork sets always add just, just enough um, to make the front end look that extra bit real. Although most of it can't really be seen in the finished model. However, it does come out pretty good. So we're using Corax White, I believe, by Citadel. Uh, this was a paint which um, Mr. Carswell over at Black Rifle Model Works mentioned to me, and he said it's a great undercoat if you're going to try and paint something white. Um, however, it is a nice off-white colour, so I've used this for the, uh, the brake fluid and the clutch hydraulic reservoirs on the... Um, on the triple tri on the top yoke, um, we also then uh, detail painted the uh, the caps in semi gloss black, which is LP five by Tamia. Next up, some Vallejo Model Air Silver. Um, this is uh, probably the best silver brush paint I have found. Um, I did go to put that on the. Uh, on the tissue then but I realized it'll soak through so I'm using an old tablet um, strip uh, these are great for just little um, little little paint pots little glue receptacles and they're just gonna go in the bin otherwise so I'll just keep three or four back and they're super handy I'm using this to paint this um, <clears throat> manifold I suppose for the brake lines uh, so the brake fluid will run through here's a nice solid line there to get the brake fluid to either caliper and then up to the master cylinder back where there'll be 61 metallic gray again um this is a really really nice color um oh look at that oh look at him go oh never mind anyway um and so we're using this to brush paint the uh the master cylinder and the clutch lever kind of bodies which attach to the actual triple trees that uh, triple trees clip-ons cranky moses um yeah, these are, these are like a metallic grey colour, so that's what we went for. Um, you can brush paint the uh, Tamir LPs if you're careful. Just try not to go over the same area more than once. Load your brush up as well. Um, but if you if you keep going over the same area, it'll, it'll start to pull up. Um, next, another one of my favourite colours, which was for some reason flashed super duper quick there, but it is... Um, XF86, is it? Or 85? I got it right in front of me. 85, XF85, rubber black. This is brilliant. Uh, I always use it for my grips, and I always use it for um, the radiator hoses, which have to be black, because some are a different colour. Um, but yeah, excellent colour, and it brush paints really, really, really well, the XF85. Um, again, with this, you could just load it up, put it on, and it dries pretty quick, because it's a kind of flat color so we use this for uh, both of our grips and then we use an alclad liquid chrome wow look at that and we use now super duper handy pill packet uh, blister pack that's it blister pack that's what they called uh, so we're gonna take decant a bit of that liquid chrome we're gonna wipe off our brush and bring back our army painter psycho brush and we're just gonna use this to detail paint a couple of little bits and bobs. So we use it for uh, bolts and um, just a couple of little bits and bobs. So, like I said, we, we're trying to hit bolt heads, um, any kind of shaft you see for the brake actuator or the clutch actuator. We're going to be using this for that too. Oh, 
Oh yes, also, 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 also words. We are using it for the actual clip-on. So the actual bar that runs through is uh, a nice high shine kind of chromey colour. So we use the Alclad, uh, the uh, Molotow um, liquid chrome for that too. So now I'm just getting in between the handles, uh, the, the grips, sorry, and the the controls and the body for the, the brake lever and whatnot. Smash in. So now we're done with that, we're going to move on to the brake discs yet again. So <clears throat> there's two kind of parts to the brake disc. Um, there's a thicker kind of inner carrier bit and there's a thinner outside bit where the brake pads actually make contact. The bit in the centre is actually, um, the colour's just a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we are going to mask off the outside and then go to town on the centre again. We're going to make it a little bit more grey because there's less wear on that part. So, um, so yeah, so what we've done is we use our vineyard calipers to measure the um, diameter of that centre section. We halved it and we used the vineyard calibers then to set this circle cutter and then we just cut out a circle out of Tamiya masking sheet. Make sure to put a slit in one side just because if it's off slightly then it can be adjusted with the slit. Um, and also detack your tape because this this isn't a nice uniform layer or coat of paint. It can be easier to pull it off so just make sure if, if you're masking over kind of textured areas you've done laid down like a textured paint on or something like this use this kind of textured effect make sure you detack your tape quite thoroughly and then we slowly go around the outside um, and it doesn't matter this way if our measurement wasn't perfect because we can just give it a tag or pull it or whatever and if there's a little gap left over in the end we can just mask that it's so much quicker than just doing five or six different circle masks and finally getting the right shape just do one which is pretty close chop it off and fill in any bits and it'll make it much quicker okay we went off and used the same method as before to paint this <clears throat> so we got a bit more of the gray and as you can see when we are um, taking the masking tape off we've got a distinct difference between the outside of that disc and the inside of the disc, which is exactly what we were looking for. There we go. Okay, next up I'm using some leftover PE from, um, I think it was the RC213V Super Detail set. Um, and all I'm doing here is using the... Uh, uh, PE to um, imitate the kind of, they're not bolts, they're more like rivets really that hold on the outer carbon ceramic disc to the inner carrier. Um, they, so they, they're not circular and they're not rectangular, they've got rounded edges and flat edges. Make sure the flat edges face the centre of the disc and the outside of the disc. Um, yeah, rather than kind of pointing up and down, so you want the the thinner. It's hard to explain, <laughs> so just make sure you look at your reference photos. Um, if you've uh, looked at any kind of MotoGP discs before, or carbon ceramic bike discs, you'll know exactly what I mean. And if you look at the kit part anyway, um, they will be molded in, so just follow that molding. All we're using is a tiny, tiny dab of CA glue on where the molding part is. <clears throat> and then we've got a toothpick which we've licked um, and we're just going to press that down onto our um, uh, sorry we haven't licked it we dipped it in water um, just to press it down pick up our PE and then pop it in place and the pull from the glue will pull that off the end of the toothpick and then uh, we're good to go uh, there were 12 in total it wasn't annoying putting them on, it was annoying taking them off the PE fret and cleaning up the connector points. That was annoying because they are very small. Okay, next up we um, we come in with our Tamiya black panel line accent colour and we 
hit all the areas with uh, with de- with the uh, raised detail or sunken detail just to bring out those uh, bring out that detail a bit more. We even went around that circle on the outside um, on the kind of demarcation between the the inner disc and the outer disc, and this um, this gave a better effect. Then you could really really tell the difference, and we also and went around all other parts with this. Lay it on quite thick because it's easy to take off afterwards. Um, <clears throat> you want to make sure you do get in all the all the areas you can, just to uh, just to bring out as much detail as possible, really. And we come in with a, uh, a cotton bud with some odorless mineral spirits to wipe away the excess of the high points. So next up, I wasn't going to leave these brake covers just primer colour, so. I popped it on an old piece of scale motorboat carbon fibre that I had, crudely cut around it, and then chopped out our piece of uh, of carbon fibre. We've done the same for both. Um, and yes, obviously we were going to carbon fibre them because they are carbon fibre in real life, so they have to be carbon fibre on the model. <laughs> we used the Studio 27 carbon fibre set for this, uh, but it didn't come with pieces for this. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe they're actually not carbon fibre, but I wanted them to be carbon fibre because carbon fibre looks cool. And this is a very kind of subtle carbon fibre pattern on this scale motorsport um, piece. Um, so yeah, we use this. I think it's the 1 20th high death, high definition. Um, anyway, we wet our piece, um, our part rather, <clears throat> and we placed on our carbon fibre decal. It is massive. However, with the UMP Extra Strong decal solution, which we have there, and a bit of heat, it conformed really, really well. So I'm using a brush, got some of the decal solution on, and I'm just going to brush it over, give it a couple of minutes to, uh, to set and do its thing, and then we're going to hit it with the heat from our heat gun. Um, this marvellous heat gun. A little bit of heat, uh, not too much, just go around all the edges, you'll see it kind of start to slowly melt, and then we're using our same brush with, we, we had the decal solution on, to brush it into place, um, and we're also going to use our fingers to help it conform. It goes down really, really quick using this method, um, so yeah, I'm quite, quite happy with how these turned out, and they were a kind of last minute thing. And there we go, we're coming back finally with our cotton bud. Um, this has been wetted, or moistened. <clears throat> Good word, Luke, moistened. And we're just going to use this to help push it in and conform the decal to areas it may not have conformed greatly to previously. There we go, and there we have it. Conformed really, really well. This carbon fibre is absolutely excellent. I love that. Um, the scale motorboat, motor sport stuff. Okay, next up we are painting the buttons. Um, it's a few different colours and I check my references and as you can see I've got a uh, post-it note there with the colours in order. So we used... Um, I think that's LP6 unless it's time yes it so it should be lp6 lp7 x8 and uh that vallejo color what is it it's some olive something or something olive um it calls out for park green in the manual um i didn't have park green so we used golden olive that's the fella from vallejo vallejo model color golden olive There are decals for this in the kit, but I opted to paint them just because, well, I thought, why not? Um, I didn't really want to do the decals. Um, didn't want to mess about trying to get them to conform and everything when I, I knew I could do it with a paintbrush. There we go, using our super duper blister pack to uh, decant some of that uh, Vallejo. I used to just decant this straight on the tissue, but then it started kind of uh, 
soaking through the tissue, soaking into the mat and leaving a splodge on the mat. So we'll suck it in there. I, 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 want, I want to make these mats last as long as possible. I don't want to, even though it's a sacrificial mat, I, I, I don't want to ruin it straight away to have to buy another one straight away. Um, okay, so then we went back to our LP6 and uh, we used this. There's, um, there's grooves in our, in our grips. Um, these are meant to be blue. So we very, very gently um, and very delicately painted this, these these grooves. Don't worry too much if you go outside the lines um, if you're doing this because you can just come back with the uh, with the XF85 rubber black and just neaten it up. Um, or you can do this and just wipe off any excess quickly um, with a pointed, a Tamiya pointed cotton bud. I think I may invest in some magnifiers or um, an optivisor. Um, I can see the, the the parts, however, when the brush is in the way, it, it gets a little bit harder to see. So it might be more beneficial for me if I can zoom in on these parts, so to say. Okay, next up, uh, we are using some very, very thin gauge wire. This came with uh, one of the Top Studio Super Detail sets. And we're going to use this for the safety wire, which is used on the um, the grips to hold them in place. So essentially, all we're doing is uh, folding it back on itself, looping it over, and then holding it and twisting it. Don't twist too much because it will break the wire right up against the grip, um, which is not really what you want because then it falls off and flops about. So. I've twisted it, there's a little gap at the top and I'm just going to squeeze it closed with my uh, my tweezers. And then once it's done, we're going to use our snippy snips and snip off the vast majority of that tail. There were, uh, there's three bits of lock wire on each bar on this bike, on each bar, on each grip on this bike. Um, I suppose it's not always exactly the same. Different riders prefer different things. As long as there's lock wire on there, uh, I think that's that's good. I think they make sure there's lock wire on there just in case, because some of the uh, they do use quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of effort sometimes throwing these bikes around, and the last thing you want is a loose grip. There you go. You can see our lock wire, three on each grip. Okay. Then it was time for more carbon fibre. This was a little bit of a nightmare. We're using the carbon fibre from the Studio 27 set. Um, probably could have done a better job of this. It didn't turn out amazingly. I think I may have rushed it, which is a bit of a standard theme for me. Um, it's quite annoying. I get quite close to the end of these builds and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so close to putting all this together. Let's just do the final things quickly. Um, yeah, that's normally my downfall. Um, but it's not awful. Uh, you'll see in the photos later. Um, probably could have turned out better. But I'm happy with how it turned out. And again, we've wet the areas. Uh, we just put the decal on. And then we've put a bit of UMP extra strong on. And then hit it with the heat. And it helped it conform really, really nicely. There were four pieces uh, for um, for the bar, for this, uh, the brake the brake guard and then there was also a, um, a number 36 which went on the very tip so yeah once we've hit it with heat once we've let the decal solution do its thing we're using a moistened cotton bud just to push out any creases or any um, any bubbles and uh, keep an eye when it hasn't conformed because it might need a little bit more heat or a little bit more decal solution but uh, generally, after the first pass, these decals, they, they went very, very well. Um, I was pleasantly surprised um, with with them because I'd heard horror stories about the Studio 27 stuff. Um, maybe not horror stories, that's exaggerating, but I've heard they can be really, really finicky. Okay, there we go. There are our parts, and now we're on to the front end build-up. Um, <clears throat> so, first things first, you will remember we'd done this wheel in a previous video. There's a... Um, a small part which uh, which goes on to the wheel here 
Um, I'm not sure why why Tammy had done this separately. Um, probably to save on plastic so they can do the center hollow. Um, because if that doesn't stick on, you won't be able to do the center hollow. Or, I don't know, I'm not sure. It does go on a specific way. Um, and it's, it's quite hard to get wrong, to be honest. Just pay attention. Um, and then also with the, the brake discs, they go on specific sides. Um, so again, pay attention to that. Uh, again, just a little tiny dab of CA glue. And then we're going to push it home. And we are golden. Um, they do go on specific sides because of that uh, wheel speed sensor ring or whatever it is. So, yeah, that makes more sense now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because the wheel has to uh, orient it, orient a certain way for the spokes to be going in the correct direction. I love this part about a build. Um, putting the front end together, I, I really, really do, because this is when everything starts looking amazing. And I think my favourite area of the bike, apart from an exhaust, is the front with the forks and the grips and everything. I think it just looks uh, it's the coolest looking part. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pop that to the side. Um, as you can see, there are plenty of pieces for this front end, and we've got a few turned metal pieces which came from our um, our fork set and uh, they look really really good some anodized stuff there um, okay this screw is uh, I can't remember the exact size it does say it in the manual and the the screws in the manual are actually to scale so I always hold them up to the screw it's asking for and if it's the right size excellent uh, if there are some screws which are very similar in size I will measure um, I'll just use a vernier calipers uh, to measure them but uh, generally the the bigger screws are pretty self-explanatory when you hold them up to the manual okay then we got the other side on uh, we pop the screw through and we're just gonna give it uh, a turn it doesn't have to be super duper tight just um, just tight enough so the wheel still turns um, even though you're not really gonna be playing with it well I don't know who plays with their models they could do uh, that's fine that's up to you um, but yeah, um, don't go too tight uh, because you risk slipping and, and, and breaking things. Um, and the this piece will, um, the front mud guard will actually hold the forks quite close together where they really need to be. Um, it does locate in two or three different places. Um, I think there's a piece on the back side further up and then on the bottom. Um, these two little little brackets here they are handed um so be careful the the mating area uh will give away which side it goes on because of the the shape um so yeah just a little dab of ca glue and then uh, and then we're going to pop it in test fit in first because these have been painted since we originally uh got everything off the sprue and and, and tested and cleaned stuff up so that may cause some issues, but just make sure you test fit before fully committing to gluing stuff in place. <clears throat> so like I said, these two little things, there was one each side. Um, they they slide in really, really easy, and um, there's they help locate our front, um, our front fender. Okay, after a lot of finagling, we got that on, and then we're going to move on to our our triple tree. Uh, our yorks is our bottom yoke. There's some locating points on the inside, which need to be cut off, um, as per the uh, the fork set instructions. Just because there's no hole on the the black turned metal part for um, for this to connect to, so it will interfere and it won't fit properly. So just snip, easy to, to cut them off. Um, just use the tip of your blade. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you're going to be able to get snippers in there and it's pointless spending hours getting a thin sander and sanding it away because there are extra kind of locating strips of plastic on this uh, on this piece. So if you, you, you can cut it flush with that, you don't have to get rid of it all. Um, so don't worry too much. Um, if you are worried, just test fit, test fit, and test fit. So pretty positive fit. Um, goes in quite nicely. And then we've got these uh, 
these uh, caps I'm calling them they're not caps they're actually um, these would be part of that bottom yoke in real life and they, they just split uh, with two bolts going through two pinch bolts to pinch the yoke um, onto the actual fork leg Okay, and we threw our fairings because they were test fitted on because I wanted a sneaky peeky look. We made sure to launch our fairings across the desk. Um, and then we slipped our brake protectors or brake guards on the actual discs. And then uh, and we slid our forks in. And this is where we can see it's, it's finally starting to come together. Um, but we swiftly moved on because we realized we forgot to do the fins. So... <laughs> Um, I held the bottom of the fin in place, popped the top in, popped a little bit of Tamiya extra thin on the end of the fin, uh, the bottom part, and then put the top on and made sure it lined up. And then we got it stuck, and then we put a little bit more Tamiya extra thin on the, uh, on the inside later on once we knew everything was in place um, as you can see put a little bit on there there is a locating point so just make sure you get that in correctly and then you can slot that into the gap on the on the nose cone on top there and it'll line up nicely and then once that's done <clears throat> we moved on to some more decaling so there was a lot of carbon fiber decals to go for in total to go on the inside of the nose cone because you can you can just about see it um, when looking at the bike from the back. So uh, we applied these the way we have applied every Studio Twenty Seven carbon fiber decal previously. Um, we put down some uh, micro sol micro set first. Uh, heated the decal, heated the decal water, put the decal in the water got it in place once it was in place we hit it with some uh, UMP extra strong setting solution then we hit it with some heat and now I'm coming back with a moistened brush just to push everything into its place um, you may end up needing a little bit more heat or a little bit more setting solution as you can see I'm just using a bit of heat here just to finely set it and then the brush then will kind of brush out any wrinkles or inconsistencies and uh, yeah yeah they go down pretty well okay so next up the fuel tank half of this was meant to be silver and half was meant to be gold now i wanted to do the same thing on the um, on the actual air box because it is like a, a gold heat shield didn't really work um because it's bare metal foil wasn't really great it didn't stick very well and um, it didn't really conform very well but I thought I'd do it on here anyway because it, it's not really going to be seen and if you do catch a glimpse of it it's going to be nice and uh, nice and shiny like that kind of gold heat shielding foil which uh, which they put on stuff um, so yeah this is just a shield um, the fuel tank from uh, engine heat and um, literally all we done is we we cut off a strip and wrapped it around and pushed it in place it doesn't really matter um it's like i said it's not going to be seen it's just that slight slight bit more realism okay now we are coming to screw the fairings in place um so I used some aftermarket, I think the Model Factory Hero, very small flathead screws because, well, the bike is held together with flathead screws, I believe uh, the actual fairings on the real bike are actually flathead. So I decided to change them out um, where they'd be seen the most just to, um, hmm, yeah, just to add a little bit more realism. Um, do be careful i had to take that back off as you can see there because the uh, the under tray is a bit of a nightmare to fit and it did pop out when i was putting everything on but we got it back um i noticed something in the instructions which i didn't notice previously and it's that there's two little um two little bits here which you need to cut um so the sides of the um the covers on the sides of the tank fit um 
don't worry too much. I I cut them out. It's been 2K'd and everything, and uh, it gets hidden anyway. So if you do make a little bit of a pig's ear of it, don't worry, because it'll be hidden. These pieces again were carbon fibre using the Studio 27 carbon fibre decal set. Um, I didn't show it all because it's pretty much exact same as it has been. It was a pretty boring little clip to be honest. Um, and I'm guessing you guys don't want to see the same thing over and over again. If you do, um, I'll try and do another Studio 27 thing um, later on. Um, yeah, just let me know. Let me know. Okay, now we've finally got that on. The tank and everything is wiggling about a bit um, just because I, I knocked it with when I was fitting that under tray. Um, but ah well, ah well, it's on, it's together. Um, <clears throat> yep, so next we pop the tank on, then we found some screws. I'm using a, a screw bit from the iFixit toolkit, which is a really, really good little kind of precision screwdriver set. Um, and that, yeah, it's a small flathead, so we're using that. We're using our our Tamiya tweezers just to get our screw in because these bits by themselves are not very magnetic. Um, and then we put it in the holder, and then away we go. Be very careful with flathead screws; it is a lot easier to slip and scratch stuff. Um, I've slipped a few times, <laughs> but I didn't scratch anything, thankfully. You see the tank underneath the tank cover wobbles about a bit. You can just snap it back in place like so. It's a bit fiddly as you can see that bottom underneath the, the, the tray has popped out again. So I'm just giving it a push in. I did take the thing back off, I believe, and put an extra bit of glue on there uh, just to uh, just to make it fit. Um, it was quite fiddly and it was quite annoying. You can see, look, um, I'm not sure why that really just didn't want to fit properly. Um, I probably misread the instructions, but as you can see, we take this back off. Okay, now it's kind of final build up as you can see on in the bottom right, just under my massive furry nose, we've got uh, a little bit of uh, white glue to help stick some stuff on. I realised that later on, after I finished this, I had to go and referee a snooker match. So I was just getting ready um, beforehand with my white cotton gloves. And also, bonus, they help not get fingerprints on our, our polished... Um, Actually, it's not polished, I'm a liar. On our lovely finish, 2K. Um, yes, that's correct, I didn't polish. I didn't think it needed it. Um, but there were just a, a couple of little bits and bobs that we had to stick on. Um, there was a little telemetry thing with the 36, which goes on the back. Um, there was another kind of electronic thing on the tail on top. Um, there was the, uh, the camera, which goes on the back too. You know, I'm just trying to push that pesky under tree back into place um, without damaging anything else. Um, but yeah, um, a couple of other bits and bobs we had to stick on. I stuck the a um, uh, couple of little carbon fibre bits. I'm just wiping off any kind of fingerprints and stuff using these cotton gloves, which uh, was sent to me by uh, by Simon. So thank you very much for that, Simon, because they have come in handy. Um, but yeah, we then used our um, white glue, which we have on our right there, um, to stick on various other little bits and bobs. There we go, we just test fit in that um, tank cover, tank guard, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Then we're going to whack on some uh, some white glue 
and pop that on. Um, the white glue I was using, which was PVA glue, didn't hold very well. Um, so I think I did, in the end, use a bit of CA on this. Just a tiny bit of orderless CA, um, just so as not to fog anything up. Um, you see, I'm just holding it in place because I don't trust the glue. We use the same white glue then um, to stick most things on on the outside, which I uh, kind of regret, to be honest. So there we go. Here's some finished photos. There's some nice uh, up front. Um, yeah, absolutely love this build. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I'm quite happy with the result. I didn't polish it. Didn't think it needed a polish. Uh, the 2K came out really, really well. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Some uh, nice side shot, side shot, side Sean Connery, side shots. Um, yeah, yeah. There's the chain. Um, I wasn't too impressed with how the chain turned out, to be honest. Um, and there are those uh, those exhaust pipes. A lot of work went into those. And uh, there's the front end. So let's go. So there we are, all done and dusted with yet another build. Yeah, like I said, super, super happy with how it came out. Maybe the chain, I wasn't too pleased with, but um, that was it. Um, I could probably clean that up uh, with a bit of odorless mineral spirits looking at the... Um, the last photo, as you can see, was a bit, um, there was still a bit of, uh, of panel liner on there. Um, and the sprocket, the green effect didn't really work out that well. Um, but it still looks good to my eye. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I absolutely love the way the exhausts turned out. Um, I think they look really good on the bike. And just the scheme overall, just the bike is such a beautiful bike. Um, and it is a massive shame that Suzuki are going to be uh, going to be dropping out of MotoGP at the end of this season, I believe. Um, it was horrible. It is not great. Suzuki were my team. I really, really liked Suzuki. Um, mainly because of the bikes and the riders. There's some really good riders. Joan Mir and uh, Alex Rins are excellent. They've got a championship winning bike. They've got a very competitive bike. They've got excellent riders with excellent potential, and they go in. Um, it's money related, fair enough, but it is a shame. It is a shame we're not going to be seeing them in the future. But back to models. Um, yeah, this one's finished, so this is all done. She is. She is there. There she is. She's going to go on the display shelf behind me. And then when I get finally get the uh, the Rossi bike done, I can sit next to uh, that and the uh, the Marquez bike that I done. Um, got one or two more GP bikes to do as well, and um, them all together. It'd be nice to see them together. Uh, but yeah, now we've started 250 GTO. Um, uh, gonna be slow progress because I've decided I wanted to 3D print loads of stuff for it. Um, I'm going to cut the doors off, I'm going to make them open, I'm going to do lots, hopefully, uh, and it's going to turn out well. I want I want to build this as detailed as I can. Um, I've got the, the wheels, the, the detail set, but I want more, so I'm going to do all I can. So, it, I, it's not going to, we're not going to have the first video of that out for a while. So what I am looking to do is to get the GNX, the GNX up next, and maybe the 10 tips and trips, 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 let's go for a trip. 10 tips and tricks videos that I was talking about. Um, we can get that out as well, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we're going to get the Buick done. Uh, I'm going to edit that very, very shortly. I think I might do it now. Um, and then, after the Buick, the tips and tricks, and then uh, we may crack on with the Audi. Eh? You've got the first part out for that. Yeah. Philip, if you're watching, I know you're going to ask. That's how the Audi's doing. It's there. <laughs> That's as far as I've got. Um, so yeah, um, thanks to Philip for reminding me about that constantly. And thanks to Dan Croke for reminding me about the Yamaha constantly. Um, yeah, so that's this one done and dusted. GNX next, 250 GTO will be in a short while. I know Paul is building one at the moment as well at ISM, so I'm going to wait until at least his build is finished. Um, 
yeah, just just because. Um, and then yeah, I got a couple of new kits through today as well, so I may do a um, inbox review of those. So that is the end of uh, of another build. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, but in the meantime, thank you for watching again. Uh, have a great day and stay safe. Yeah, bastards.